what's up youtubers today i'm going to present to you a blog which is a bit different from our normal style of blog now i am at a relatively famous place in bradford and we are going to end the story back at this place I'm going to meet Mark Nicholson at Holly Bank Road with Imthiaz and what we'll be doing is taking you a trail of a ghost story a famous folklore ghost story of Bradford now I know this is a bit of a history channel all about heritage but this particular story is ingrained in the Bradford history and I know we all love a bit of a spooky story especially a story that involves a bit of romance so let's see where this trail begins good morning Mark good morning thanks for joining us again and in Piaz right where shall we start I think we'll start here actually because we're next to a road sign called Hollybank Road and that will feature quite prominently in this story it's a, a ghost story and it's also an old Bradford legend that seems to have gone underground a bit really in the last 30 years it's a story that I grew up with as um, a young lad living down in Fairweather Green and I think it might be more famous this side of Bradford but it's um, like I say it's a ghost story it's folklore it's legend and like most ghost stories and legends small details in the story tend to change you know depending on whoever's telling the story they'll take something away and add something right. so th this um this video blog is going to go off in all kinds of directions but by and large what we'll try and stick to is the version of the story that I grew up with but I okay. will allude to right. the other um, variations of the story right. so as I say we're here on Hollybank Road in the uh, Horton Bank area of Bradford and I don't know exactly when all of this is supposed to have happened it might have been about 300 years ago because yeah. this is a legend that's been going on for mm, let's see 200 years or something yeah. like that yeah. so in this vicinity lived a young lady called Rebecca and um, just behind you there where you can see those new houses there used to be a mill there called Cliff Mill and Rebecca lived in a cottage just opposite the mill right okay. and she fell in love with a fella who came from quite a well-off family now she wasn't well off at all um, and the man's family wasn't very happy about the relationship he was actually betrothed to somebody else you know somebody of standing within the within the city and the story goes that he actually got Rebecca pregnant and his family weren't happy about it and they said you can't marry her something has to be done so on one fateful night they met and he'd been filling her head with all sorts of talk that he was going to marry her and on this occasion he turned up on his horse because there wasn't cars back then you know 300 years ago and he had with him a wedding dress and he told her to put it on and he told her that he was going to take her to a church and he was going to marry her and the place where this happened is just down the road down there and we'll see it in a second and it okay. was an old farmstead called Hugh Clues which sadly isn't there anymore so what we'll do is we'll take a little wander down there and we'll pick up the story. So this is um, a reasonably new street. Uh, hasn't been here that long, by the looks of it. And we've got a map here. And it's um, a current aerial photograph with an old map superimposed on the top. And we are currently standing here on this corner and you can just make out there the farm that I was referring to that was called Hugh Clues and we've got a proper printout of the old map 
so there's the farm, Eucluse farm. That's the mill I referred to earlier on, which was on the corner where Rebecca apparently lived nearby. She lived in some cottages opposite it. Now, you know where exactly that was a few hundred years ago. That's that's anybody's guess. But um, there's a photograph of the farmstead as it was. So that is Hugh Clue's farm. All right, yeah. Roughly what sort of year was, uh, do you think this is? Oh God, I would say towards the early 20th century. Mm. Um, you know, there's people that remember that farm being there yeah. when this was all, I mean, it was later, um, like cricket ground down, down there, on the side of Rappenham Park. They can remember the, the farm being there. Now, if we just peek down here, if you can see where that first turn off to the right is, those houses that are on that corner, that's absolutely where the Blues farm was. So that is the spot where Rebecca and this gentleman had met on that fateful evening where he produced the wedding dress. Right, just around that corner. Right just basically end, yeah. on that corner, that's where the farm was, so it was right. roughly in this area. All right. Can we take a walk down there? Do you think we can we can have a little look at it, yeah. yeah. Behind us, is um, this area here, it's very windy today. This little spot here, where I stood on this corner. So that's where the farmhouse stood. And this is the, the area of the fateful rendezvous. So Rebecca and the young man, they mounted the horses at Hugh Clue's farm. And it's quite likely that they'll have come up here onto Holly, Holly Bank Road. And they will have traveled in this direction towards the end of Hollybank Road where it meets Hollingwood Lane. And we'll have a quick look down there. So we're here near the Hollybank Road and Hollingwood Lane junction. And as I said, they will have come down here on the horses. He actually encouraged her, he gave her a head start and told her to race ahead. And he said they were actually heading in the direction of Thornton, which is way yonder. Now this is where the legend kind of starts to variate a little bit because um, depending on who you speak to, a terrible deed was awaiting Rebecca on that occasion and it occurred in Thornton, yet other people have spoken of something terrible happening to her over Wilsdon Way in a coal pit, which I would imagine anyway they still would have had to travel that way in that direction. So the actual fate of Rebecca, that, you know, as I say, that is open to interpretation and what particular legend you, you know, you grew with and what you believe, but, um, you know, how she died and where she died. But one thing that we do know is that this park, Brackenhill Park, is apparently haunted by the ghost of Rebecca. And there are several accounts of ghost sightings in this area. And our friend Imtiaz is over there is actually reading through a few of them and is going to share them with us. As a kid we used to enter from Bartle Lane to get to Brecon Hill Park. On the left of the road leading down to the park was a channel that had high stone sides which in years gone by may well have been some kind of water or not. The legend we were all told was that this was the ghost of Fair Becker. The ghost of Fair Becker was common people put iron outside their front doors for protection from her. Sightings gradually lessened and this was blamed on all the noise from the new mills and factories scaring her away. I grew up on Hollingwood Lane and as a kid I was convinced I spotted Becca. I woke early one morning to see a lady dressed in an exquisite white gown staring out of my window. We lived in Hollywood Lane. I was told if the holly grew Fair Becca would appear. When I was a teenager, I would hang about Brackenhill Park, often walking home late at night near the cricket fields. We could hear the sound of galloping horses on the nearby fields. The first anecdote that Intiaz read out there related to this pathway that leads from Barter Lane down to the park. This is apparently the location where Rebecca has been seen. Now, where, was she on a horse? Was she headless? Who knows? But this is where the ghost is more commonly seen. And there was another aspect um, to this story that Imtiaz alluded to when he was reading out the anecdotes, and that is about the holly. Um, 
they said that when the holly grew up on Hollybank Road, that's when you knew the ghost was going to appear. And there's a bit of a spooky detail there because whether or not um, Becca died in Wilsdon or Thornton, she fell to her death. And we'll go into that in a little bit more detail later on, but she didn't die instantly. And her treacherous boyfriend called down to her and said he was sorry. And she replied to him telling him that um, he'd betrayed her. And she added one further detail that when the holly grew she would return again and again and again so that's quite a, a chilling little detail and part of me wonders is holly bank road called that because of the rebecca story was it known as something else before because i've not seen any holly on holly bank road but once upon a time there could have been tons of the stuff who knows local legend so just before we leave the Horton Bank area, we've come back to the junction of Bartow Lane and Hollybank Road. And just beyond there, you can see new houses, or newish houses. That uh, is the site of the former Cliff Mill. Um, and Rebecca lives opposite there. And she was also said to haunt this particular part of the area. And as Cliff Mill got a little bit more industrialised and a little bit noisier as the years went on, it's been said that the hauntings became less and less because the whirring noises of machinery pretty much like what we're hearing now actually drove the ghost away out of the area anyway let's go to Thornton Rebecca 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 the ghost of Thornton viaduct she was pushed by her lover from her horse whilst riding across the viaduct by calling her name three times, you can, apparently, make her materialise. When he looked down from the viaduct, she was still moving. Becca, my love, forgive me, it's for the best, but believe me, it breaks my heart. From the valley below, with gasping breaths, she said, it breaks my heart too. You have betrayed our promise of love. That can never be broken as my bones are. I will never leave you. I will come again and again. We will be together till you die. He then dashed up to the village and shouted that there have been a terrible accident. The local doctor couldn't do anything for Rebecca. She was buried in the old bell chapel in Thornton, the very place he was to marry her. In his anguish, he would tell people that everywhere he would see Rebecca in the corner of his eye, standing in the trees, stood looking down at him in the night. He would see her in her wedding dress, arms held out, come to me, my love, come to me, she would say. He ended his days in the newly founded asylum in Menstam. Poor man would just hold his head in his hands and scream. So now we're at the Beldine Road side of Bradford and um, where we last left the Rebecca story, her treacherous lover had tossed her over the side of the viaduct where she plunged to her death. And I did mention earlier on in the video that there's different variations to this legend, this uh, ghost story. And depending on who you listen to or what you read, some have attributed the legend to Wakefield, others have attributed it to Bailden. And there's also those that speak of this area, Pitty Beck, which is a section of um, Beck water that runs down from Ollerton and it goes underneath Thornton Road. And there's actually a bridge a little bit further on there called um, Pittybeck Bridge, which is on Allerton Road. The ghost of Rebecca has been seen wandering around there at night as well. But I'm going to show you a place that we used to visit as children. And this is where I first heard of the Rebecca story. And this is where things will get perhaps a little spooky. And we'll see if Imtiaz has the courage to shall we say invoke the spirits wait and see walking down this pathway and uh, I got to this tree and the leaves seem to be autumnal and uh, it's summer anything to do with the Rebecca story there seems to be a sense of death all around here
So this is um, an area that I used to come to a lot as a child um, when I was about seven or eight. And um, we used to have a little bit of a dare thing going on. This is Pity Beck, which is uh, running down there. And there's like a tunnel here, which goes all the way under Thornton Road. And it comes out at the other side where the, uh, is it Safe Style UK? The mansions are at the other mm. side, yeah. Um, and what we used to do is we used to dare each other and we never quite did it we used to dare each other to shout into the tunnel Rebecca three times and the story went along these lines that if you did that she would appear in your bedroom that night and she'd torment you and send you insane basically and you'd end up in um, an insane asylum and that was um, my first introduction to the Rebecca legend and I'm just wondering if um, our friend Dimsy has this feeling daring okay I'm at the almost at the mouth of the tunnel at Pity Beck and you see it's quite wide and I'm going to shout into the tunnel Rebecca Rebecca Rebecca. Let's see what happens tonight. I can't believe he's done that. That was the trail of the legendary tale of Fair Becca. Now I don't know about you guys, whether you believe in this tale or not, but I'm concerned about Imtiaz. And we can only find out if he's in good health, well-being, in our next vlog, or even if he turns up on the next vlog. So please do follow us, and we'll find out together. So until next time, peace out.